Hey everybody, welcome to House of Karma. I'm your host, Karma Serrano, also known as I'm Your Karma. And I'm here, I'm super excited to introduce you guys mm -hmm. the new show coming on the LDM Network, The Comment Section. <laughs> comment Section. <laughs> comment <laughs> Section. <laughs> comment <laughs> Section, oh my God. <laughs> like I'm I'm sorry, we're going to get it right. We're going to get, we're it, gonna right. get it right. Everyone's going to know our name soon. We're, we're going good. to get it right. Um, <laughs> speaking of names, can you guys introduce yourselves? Absolutely. My name is Shirley Phillips. I'm Emmanuel Anzules. My name is Matthew Dennis. And welcome, guys. Thank Again, you. I said, Thank like I said, um, I'm super excited because you guys know that the LDM Network is the number one station in the world, right? Yep. <laughs> I have to just throw that so? job in there. <laughs> 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 well, guys, welcome. Um, can you guys just let the audience know a little bit about yourselves? Sure. Well, we are a radio show mm -hmm. slash podcast mm -hmm. slash TV show. TV show. We, we're almost <laughs> like, the, not the breakfast, but we're like the brunch club. Because mm -hmm. there's like a little club? bit of everything. Right. Or the yeah. after brunch club. The after brunch club. The happy hour So club. those conversations that you have when you're drunk <laughs> after brunch, that's, that's this. That would be us. <laughs> that's a fact. And you guys uh, cover everything um, that has to do with the black and the brown community. All things black and brown. Mm -hmm. Which is awesome because, you know, like we've come a long way as a people and as a society. And it's mm -hmm. about time that, you know, we start, you know, showing each other love and, and just <coughs> putting, putting ourselves out there. Right. You know? And just having like uncomfortable conversations. Mm -hmm. like we are not afraid to have conversations that other people shy away from. Or We're talk about topics that are perhaps taboo in our communities. Mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm are important and relevant mm -hmm. and timely so we mm -hmm. do spend a lot of time tapping into those those topics yes. exactly Absolutely. I, I haven't been stopped by the police in about a month and a half wow so wow. i'm feeling really good about that we can we get some claps and you know that's mm. it's, and then thank them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's actually like it's funny but it's not funny that you say that mm -hmm. because for like for young men of color, mm -hmm. it's a scary time to live, you know, um, when people have to be scared of people that are supposed to be protecting mm -hmm. them, yeah. you know, that's, that's mm -hmm. a problem in that's our problem. society. The crazy thing is that, that prop, that's been an ongoing problem since, Forever. you know, black people have been living on this country, mm -hmm. or in this country, yeah, yeah. and it's still <laughs> going on, <laughs> 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 and it's still going on in yeah. 2019. It's just being recorded now. That's right. right. It wasn't on tape before. And thank God for, for that because imagine how many more deaths and stuff that we wouldn't even know about if it wasn't for b things being recorded mm -hmm. and, and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I think that we as a society, we've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. a long way to go. One of the biggest problems I think that we have is we don't show each other enough support. There's, it's, it's quick, it's easy to hate on somebody, it's, it's easy to put somebody down that you see is like you because I feel like there's, it's a threat thing, like mm -hmm. you come from mm -hmm. the same place I come from, so why, how could you get ahead, you know what I mean, before me? It's more mm -hmm. like a competition and that's a mindset that we have to let go of. Yeah. Crabs in a barrel that's syndrome. Just, that was exactly what I was about to say. Absolutely. Me too. And, um, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're all agreeing. We share one brain. <laughs> one brain. <laughs> we left off. We share one brain. I think it, he says it. He says it. I think it, etc. Yep. And you guys have an Instagram page. Yes. We do have an Instagram page. It's the comment section. Um, so make sure y'all follow. It's the comment yes. radio. Comment radio. See now you're messing up now. So too. what had happened was we right. had a name and then mm. someone stole it and so I had to change uh. it. So. <laughs> It's comment radio. Right. It's comment radio. The comment radio. radio. <laughs> so you guys already know. Make sure you follow that on Instagram. Comment radio. <laughs> Please follow and, us. and you guys are coming on a good time. You guys are premiering on Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. Right. So, you know, you people could drink your margaritas and watch the show. <laughs> Can we drink call in? Can on we? air? I that mean, I don't thing? see why not. <laughs> Charles? <laughs> <laughs> Can we drink margaritas on air? 
I don't see why not. It just can't so be. Can we put a brown paper bag around there? <laughs> can it be? It could be a red solo <laughs> you, cup. You can get a show. Why not? You. It's your show. Cup. It's your show. You do whatever you want. You do whatever you want. Red cup show. Got it. <laughs> So, so, in my oye, like, if you want to drink, true. don't drink, don't turn problem. Cinco de Mayo, man. Don't put the logo. Don't put the logo. You okay? So your show will be premiering every Mondays? Uh, Sundays. Every Sundays Sunday. at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it will be the last awesome. thing you hear before you start your lovely work week. Exactly. And, uh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. and, well, I want to congratulate you guys. Because I know you guys were in another... And then you guys are in, in another network, and then you guys are coming over here, so welcome. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you have any viewers that want to call, the number is 347-640-3920. If you guys have any questions or any comments, mm -hmm. feel free to call the show. Um, I want to start with you, Miss Shirley. Okay. Can you please um, just give us a little bit of, of an input about yourself? As a person and as a person, um, <laughs> yeah. goes, you know. Do we have the time for this? Right, I'm yeah. I'm yeah. long-winded, but I'll try to go. shorten it. Right. Um, um, the show's gonna be over, <laughs> 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 and she's still gonna be talking. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, one minute, one minute. So what happens is they bully me because I'm say, the get only. Attack? I, I get attacked. <laughs> I'm used to it. Um, that my name is Shirley. I'm a Pisces. <laughs> um, 43 years old out here. I'm an educator. I run a nonprofit for at risk girls called Go Girls Inc. Mm -hmm. um, started out as a journalist. Emmanuel and I both started out as journalists and then we kind of, you know, veered off <laughs> the main path and oh, became really? educators. <laughs> and so now we're kind of, you know, circling back to uh, TV and radio, which is, I think, both of our passions. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, very happy to be here. You know, I hope to bring some insight from the estrogen perspective. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of testosterone here. Wow, I feel like um, a shot. You know, that's I the first time somebody's ever said that about me. <laughs> but yes, you're facing you me. Testosterone has never been used to describe me. <laughs> so Emmanuel has he he does, but he has a he he we said he has a black woman that lives inside of him. So. Um, <laughs> You know, he yeah. gives me the support that I need when Matt. Listens. I had I had took journalism in college. That was my mm. major, was major. <clears throat> and I was minoring in music. Mm. But the journalism, I realized like that's a profession that you're gonna make enemies, or mm. you're gonna ruin somebody's life possibly, or I mean, it's it's different <laughs> ways that you can take it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when when I was in class, I was like, geez, I don't know if this is what I really want to do. But then when I did the broadcasting, I was like, I love this, like. I'm here for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to. I I, I mm. wanted to make a lot of money, and so when I first started out, I worked on the news side. So I worked for the Detroit News, nice. making like thirty three thousand dollars. I'm like, yo, I owe more than this in student loans. I can't live off of this. So wow. I got an internship with MTV, which went really well. But then my mom got sick, so I had to um, mm -hmm. vacate that. I'm from Michigan, by the way. So I was gonna say, you just mentioned Detroit. Yeah, so I'm, I'm from Michigan. My I, sister lives in Michigan. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, she lives in, uh, let me see if I can pronounce Hopefully it, Kalal Kalamazoo? Yeah, that's Kalamazoo. it. Kalamazoo. <clears throat> yeah, you know when they um, when they shot up the Cracker Barrel? Oh, I know someone that, that lives in Kalamazoo. Excuse me, that's where <laughs> cereal was made, Kellogg. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know when they shot up the um, the right. Cracker <laughs> Barrel, my sister was actually working there. Really? And she had, yeah. she told me that she went to the bathroom, happened to go to the bathroom, and when she came out, she heard the commotion, and she ran back into the stall. Wow. So that was that was a scary wow, experience. Yeah, that was the first time I ever heard of that town, and I'm like, wait, you live there? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're known for cereal. That's, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> what what about you, Emmanuel? So I'm Emmanuel and Zules. I'm also an educator. Mm -hmm. Shirley pretty much summed up my life through hers because we have very similar mm -hmm. trajectories that we've taken on. Ooh, look at you with the SAT words. I oh, know, right? It's SAT three. season. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm a history teacher, so I'm very big into history. Matt is as well, and I'm sure he'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. I'm currently teaching my kids about civil rights and the civil rights era, not just for African Americans, but for women and mm -hmm. gay people and Native Americans as well mm -hmm. as Chicanos and the Young Lords, which were the Puerto Rican Black Panthers here in New York mm -hmm. and in Chicago. So... In addition to that, I also like entertainment, anything current events, anything that has to do with like gossip and, you know, like the the world of entertainment, music, TV, nice. and all that stuff. So yeah! I hope to bring, <laughs> right, 
<laughs> so I hope to bring some of those conversations to the table. I am a bit of a chatty Cathy when you give me some room to do so. Maybe some arguments. I've never been in between <laughs> these two, so I'm kind of like <laughs> anxious right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, I, I don't know. It's it's really, um it's a weird <sighs> feeling, but I think I can stomach it Excuse me, you left for a little bit the longer. the important part of your bio. Oh, and I was also Mr. United States hey. in 2017. Okay. Yes. That just gave up the crown like last year. But How was that? Giving up the crown. Um, How hard was that for you? It was, bitter, a little bit. It was bittersweet. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> it was bittersweet because it was oh. a lot of work and yeah. I have a full-time job and that was a full-time job. So Yeah, that's amazing. I was also doing radio at the mm -hmm. time, so it was just a lot going And where on. are you from originally? Lima, Peru. Oh, from Peru. One of By my way of New Jersey. <laughs> 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 that's okay because when people ask me what part of puerto rico my family's from i always say the bronx and then they laugh and i'm like but well, that's what they call <laughs> 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 that's hilarious <laughs> the bronx should be an extension of puerto rico i mean <laughs> that's where my family's from it's the truth <laughs> <laughs> I, I support <laughs> Okay, so I don't have any, like any special designations like these two but <laughs> my name is matthew dennis i'm a teacher educator, mentor, all those things. Uh, future politician, might be running for office in 2020 or 2022. One of those things. Uh, hmm. Also <laughs> a former athlete, very long time ago, I'm no longer dunk the ball, I found it out last week. Well, two weeks ago during the student teacher basketball game, couldn't dunk the ball, so sad. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> definitely got rejected by the rim. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm a history teacher, very into politics, um, definitely news. Um, a lot of stuff I bring to the show is going to be centered uh, around, like I said, government, who's running, who is going to beat number 45 in two years. I cannot wait for that. Whoever that's going to be, I'm going to go work for them. Uh, um, other than that, in my history classes, I always talk about the truth. So, for example, I don't teach about Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492. No, Christopher Columbus and his men are rapists. They killed a whole bunch of Native Americans. Um, Thanksgiving should not be real. The pilgrims mm. killed people and stuff. So my students are always sad, but woke. it's the truth. <laughs> sad they, but woke. They, they need to know. know. They need to know. Yeah. yeah they, it's, they question it's, things. I have an 11 year old who was telling me, Mom, do you know, we were learning about Emmett Till. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that, wow. and do you know that this, you know, he got murdered for just, for, he got accused of whistling at a white lady and mm -hmm. then got murdered for it. And then and she was like really sad about it. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, if he that would have never happened to him, um, we would have never knew about his story. Right. And and there's so many people like him that we don't know about that we don't we haven't heard about because their stories haven't been out there. And the sad part about it is the lady that my daughter's telling me from mom, like the lady that accused him, lied on right. him, and she's she still alive. She's not in jail. And, and, and nothing happened to her. And I said, unfortunately, in this world that we live in. Because of our color and stuff, mm -hmm. we will, you know, we go through stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, before we go to commercial break, I want to ask <coughs> Emmanuel. There uh, is a, and I know you're the po the political one, mm -hmm. but there's a, a man, I forgot his name. I think it's Cory something. Cory Booker. Cory Booker. Mm -hmm. That is running for, wants to run for president. Yeah. And he wants to be, like, he, he's like the first male open gay man. Um so like I always ask my guests, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, and, um so he was asked actually on the view a few weeks ago if he was if America was ready for an openly gay president and he was like, We'll see. I personally think that we are. Mm -hmm. Um I think that America would rather pick a gay man over a woman. Mm hmm which mm -hmm. is very unfortunate because we have our women candidates and politicians are probably more ready for that role mm -hmm. than any man will ever be, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in I, my opinion. Right. So I, I welcome it, and I'm a part of the gay community as well. Absolutely. I, do, I would prefer if it was a gay man of color, though, because okay. I feel like there's a certain strength and mm -hmm. power that we bring to the, like, to society in general because we have like a double struggle that we've had to mm, right. endure and grow up with i feel like people are scared and and i don't know why because a man is still a man it doesn't matter his sexuality should not determine his job mm -hmm. it does just because he's he's 
gay does not mean that he's not going to do the same job that a man is going to do mm-hmm. in the office. That's my mm-hmm. opinion. Mm-hmm. So I'm all for my, I have a going on 18 year old in July. She's, she's a lesbian mm-hmm. and I support her 100% because at the end of the day, like that's my child. Right. I feel like the world is going to be cruel enough and who am I to, to be, you know, to judge her on her sexual preference. Her as a person is, is one thing, but you know, her sexual person preference is, is different. Mm-hmm. But um we're gonna go on a commercial break real quick and when we come back we'll be more with the cast and crew of
We are back now at House of Karma with the cast and the crew of, I'm going to let you guys say it, the, the comment, comment section. section. <laughs> and we we were talking about some very interesting um, topics. Um, if you guys don't know, you guys are just tuning in. This is a new show coming on the LDM Network every Sundays from 6 to 7. Six to from 6 seven to PM. Sunday. 7. Oh, my God. 6 to 7. I said 6 to Sunday. <laughs> Man, it's, an, it's, been a long day. it's been a long day. It's been a long day. Um, but I just wanted to ask you guys. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you guys on your new show, Thank and you. also on your career path that you guys choose to do. Because I I had just posted a few minutes ago earlier today. I was helping my six year old with her homework, and I swear I wanted to pull my hair out of my head. <laughs> Kudos to all the teachers out there because I feel like they don't get paid enough. And it's a hard job. Not everybody can do it. So I definitely, you know, want to com commemorate. Ugh, can't even speak today. I want to congratulate you guys on that. Pregnancy <laughs> brain. Yeah. Pregnancy. Yeah. <laughs> so what is um, what is the hardest part of your job? Ooh. Teaching. Um, yeah. Biting my tongue and making sure that I am saying age, kid, socially, politically correct commentary to my students mm -hmm. because uh, these kids are very reckless with their mouths. They're very disrespectful. Not yeah. all of them, but um, it's hard sometimes to mm -hmm. curb what I really want to say and, you know, uh, reprimand them appropriately. And this but is why I say you can't, you can't pay me It's not for everybody. <laughs> it's not for everybody. But um, I teach middle school, so they're like at a fork in the road. So they mm -hmm. need to see you know, people that look like them, first of all. I teach in the Bronx. People that look like them, mm -hmm. and they also need to know, you know, different ways to handle conflict. And so I do that every day because I'm biting my tongue every day. Right. You know, um, grammatically. I my correct. Hmm. My tongue. I, I, I he doesn't bite his tongue, so he's going to catch case one day. But it's okay. <laughs> no, I'm not. I mean, listen. He's going to catch case one day. Listen. Um, <clears throat> but that's the hardest part. But other than Absolutely. that, they're a joy. I mean, people think it's hard, yeah, but they're, it's they're really the best part of the job. It's Absolutely. the adults that and, we and have. And did you issues. choose to teach middle school? Absolutely not. It fell in my lap. Okay. Um, I used to manage after school programs in Detroit. And so I realized that I really enjoy working with the middle school um, population more so than the younger ones. And I just said, you know what, let me just go to school, get another master's, and, and do this. Um, and I loved it. I haven't looked back since. So. Hmm. I teach high school, so my kids are like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's weird because I used to teach middle school too, at the <coughs> same school actually where Shirley mm -hmm. works now. Mm -hmm. Is that where you guys met? Nope. No, oh, we met. Yeah, we met at a party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say we were having a good time. <laughs> we just we found out that we were both teachers. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I was trying to bring her to my school. Yes, you tried to get me there. I remember I that. And yep. then she ended up in my other school. Yep. Mm. The that hardest accident. part for me teaching high school students is like seeing how much they don't know with the time that they have left mm -hmm. to face the real mm. world and how like life is going to hit them in the face because they're not prepared for the challenges ahead. Mm -hmm. And our kids are very, um, I want to say this nicely. <laughs> I feel like a lot of my students are very um, entitled, which is fine because you're a teenager. You're supposed to be like the world is yours to capture. Mm -hmm. You have this very like nonchalant attitude mm -hmm. about certain things that are your responsibilities, but you don't know what's out there and how life doesn't make exceptions for no. people in the way that teachers do. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's this system has become one that pushes teachers to kind of do whatever students want mm -hmm. and need and say mm -hmm. so students feel like they have a lot more power mm -hmm. than is real of the world mm -hmm. right so that to me is the hardest part i'm gonna disagree with shirley i don't think i'm gonna catch a case <laughs> but listen when you see a child in your room and they're reading they're trying to read mm -hmm. and you ask them a question like oh man which which word can't you read <laughs> what is it? A lot of words you understand, right? Go to the kid you're whispering because you don't want to embarrass them. You know what the real level of this child is. Kids looking like, oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay, man, just just give me one word. And the child points to it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, listen, this the struggle. But then appeared later in the lunchroom, you see them doing like this. 
right? <laughs> dancing and, and talking right, about all the, about the, <laughs> the, the curse words and all the songs. Mm-hmm. It's annoying. So uh, I do point out the truth with children. I'm like, oh, this <laughs> can't know. Can't do this. I mean, you got to be like honest. This. And then, and then you know, mm-hmm. sometimes teaching is hard, right? Because a lot of times uh, uh, parents think that you mm-hmm. should be raising their children mm-hmm. as well. And it's, it's our fault that their kids can't do this. But it's like, mm-hmm. hey, um, you got to, it's like passing the baton to Absolutely. you at home to work with them. You can't just all be us. But anyway, sometimes kind of take out my yeah. frustrations and do it in a very funny way. I think that I agree <laughs> because I feel like, like you said about the entitlement. Mm-hmm. And the disrespect, I feel like students nowadays, like not students, just kids in general, they don't respect their elders. Mm-hmm. They feel like they deserve everything without working hard. Mm-hmm. And they're dumb. A lot of them are really just dumb. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you can't say that. Can't that. Say it like that. can't say that. You can say it on this show. <laughs> A lot of them are dumb. And, 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 the, and parents, you know, be, back in the days, if you was getting in trouble in school, your parent would discipline you because you're not doing what you're doing. But nowadays, parents want to fight with the teachers. Of course. And that's the reason why the kids don't respect. Because now mm-hmm. they feel like, I'm going to just tell my parent, my mom, this and this and that. And the, instead of the parent going to the school to find out what's going on, they're disrespecting the, the, the principal, disrespecting the teacher. They want to fight them. Right. And you mm-hmm. can't do that. you got to like, set an example. Well, the, the, the crazy thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, some of the, you know, in a previous school I worked at, uh, you know, some teachers think I'm, I'm a little bit too tough on the kids, right? But I'm not. I was those kids, so yeah, I'm talking them crazy. I'm talking them silly. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Some kids and, need that. And you know, some teachers from other communities, like uh, from other communities, like, <laughs> you can't talk to the kids <laughs> like that. You gotta be their friend. All right, man. I see you in a month. Let me know how how that works out. Right. And then and friendship the be running all over you. In Absolutely. My class, they chill out. They do no work. There has to be a balance there. Absolutely. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I tell people all the time, and they look at me like I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. Like the first few weeks of school, the toughest kid you have to violate. You have to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. One good time in front of people, make an example it's out of jail. that one kid, yeah. and then you get your street cred. Mm-hmm. And then right. after that, you have no problems now the kids because they know. know. Don't mess with that teacher. They already know. You got to stink them. You got to <laughs> kid with words. <laughs> with can't, words. Can't use your hands. And they appreciate <laughs> it, especially in the communities that we te- in which That's we right. teach. Mm-hmm. These kids are looking for structure. Right. So when they come into a classroom and the teacher has no classroom management, it's trying to be their friend, mm-hmm. they don't mm-hmm. respect that. Nope. Because mm-hmm. they know your role and they know what you're being paid to do. So mm-hmm. when you don't provide structure and discipline, they will run all over you. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, Emmanuel, have you ever had a student come up to you and um, talk to you about, you know, maybe I, I feel like I may, you know, l- be bisexual or mm-hmm. gay and mm-hmm. I don't know how to tell my parent? Like, mm-hmm. how do you help a student out? Um, Because this is the day and age where a lot of kids are open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So most of the times I don't let them do that. Like, I don't let them do that with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I always guide them in the direction of, like, feeling comfortable with their identity regardless of what that is. I I teach that in my classes Mm -hmm. through my Mm -hmm. words, through my actions. I let kids know the first day of school that I'm openly homosexual. Mm -hmm. I show them pictures of my boyfriend. I tell them about myself so I'm open with them and I celebrate my identity and I'm proud of it Mm -hmm. faults you know bad character traits whatever the case is like I always celebrate myself Mm -hmm. and I think in doing that I open my students to seeing that their identity is valid as Mm -hmm. well Mm -hmm. absolutely Absolutely. I, I know I'm homosexual but I'm not going to, like, it's not my role to, like, bring them mm-hmm. out. Or right. I don't want to just be there for them as a gay person mm-hmm. that brings them out either. Like, Absolutely. I, I just want them to celebrate who they are and mm-hmm. be okay with that. That's wonderful. I was going to say, that that happened to me once. Shirley, you remember at that old school? school mm-hmm. Ooh, we're naming names. And <laughs> remember that kid? kid? Remember, I called you into the room, like, yo, come here. Come in here. You remember that? He was in here. <laughs> oh, listen, let me tell you, listen, listen. All right. 43. So, so we at our we worked together at our previous school. This one, you know, brawler kid right, comes to me. He's like, oh, you know, Mr. Dennis, I, I gotta talk to you. Someone told me, I'm like, this is gonna be a curveball. It's gonna be bad. This, I, I don't, I don't know what he wants to talk to me about. We don't talk, but and I, you know, I roast this kid every day. So, what you gotta talk to me about for sure. All right. 
So I see Shirley walking by. I'm like, yo, come. <laughs> come in here. I, I feel like I'm meeting a witness, right? <laughs> so she sits down, and he sits up to her talking. I'm like, yo, so, so what's up, man? What's, what's going on? And he tells me he's gay. I'm like, I was there? Okay. Yes. I don't remember this. Yeah. When I tell, I cannot, of course, I can't share the child's name. And I'm not going to describe him. start with? I'm not going to describe the kid. <laughs> <laughs> but once he comes there, I'll tell you. Like, okay. Oh, yeah. So then we gotta come back on the show and read. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but look, I, I, look, you know, the thing I, <laughs> the thing that I was gonna say about kids is that they they recognize the real world, yes. right? Um, you know, at the same previous school, when uh, number forty five, I can't use his name, uh, won the election. You know, I showed up to work, and the lunchroom was quiet. Mm. It was it was dead? Not dead, but like the kids are kind of like. And like that was the first time mm. I spent all day. I'm teaching lessons that whole day. I had to spend talking to them, like reassuring them, like that you know he's not going to work with immigrants as well. You know that ICE isn't going to come to your house and snatch up mom and dad or you know themselves because some of them are there legally as well. Mm -hmm. um, so mm. they recognize a lot of things, and adults don't give them enough like credit. That's true. They know a lot about the world because well mm -hmm. the internet. <laughs> Absolutely. The thing too. The internet. The internet. Mm. Plus, they have like a sixth sense. They know they can, stuff. Yeah. They're perceptive. They're very perceptive. They observe everything. They observe. They know when you have different glasses. Mm -hmm. Everything. They know when your hair, when you're having a bad hair day. They Absolutely. know when your socks don't match. <laughs> they know when I change perfumes. Miss, you smell different today. You changed your perfume. <laughs> <laughs> These were the first people to tell me that I was on dog. I didn't know. Oh my gosh. It was clowning me. I was like, oh snap. All oh, word, but you still can't read. So I told <laughs> him, like, you still can't read. So. Mm -hmm. Now, Shirley, being from um, Michigan, right? Mm -hmm. How, how, I mean, because you know, New York is a little bit more. It's a different animal. Y yeah, more diverse. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> yeah. if you want to say, That's how did you, growing it. up, right. um, did you experience any. You know, racism, race, racist profiling, and how did you deal with it? How did no, you um, at the elementary high school level, no. Um, most of my schools were, you know, probably predominantly black. Um, I experienced racism when I went to the University of Michigan, which is mm -hmm. predominantly white. Mm -hmm. I got called nigger for the first time, N-I-G-G-E-R. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, I called nigger for the second time today in Yonkers, New York, which we'll talk about on Sunday. Congratulations. Um, thank oh, you. Make sure y'all tune <laughs> in on Sunday. I'm club now. Um, <laughs> but no, I, we very much lived in our own little microcosm of black and brown excellence. You know, I went to magnet schools. Everybody was, you know, excelling, doing their thing. And I went to U of M and realized, like, how far behind we really were. Like, I had never seen a Macintosh computer before. And this is oh. early 90s, so mm. we were mm. still very much antiquated. Went to Ann Arbor, Michigan. These kids didn't even have textbooks. They were used to doing everything on, you know, Macs. So, you know, even just English and language, I was so far behind these kids who, you know, had the best of everything. Mm -hmm. And went to school with a lot of kids at U of M had never been around black and Hispanic people. I was the first black person many of those students had ever met. Mm. Wow. So it was very eye-opening, and um, similar to what Emmanuel said, I kind of realized what the world really, really was going to offer me as a black woman. Emma Absolutely. Um, Emmanuel, same question for you. Have you ever, uh, growing up, did you have to uh, deal with any racism or being that you're homosexual, any, did anybody ever treat you some type of way, and how did you cope with that? So I think the biggest, um, in terms of racism, the biggest struggle that I've faced in my life, and I guess more so like in receiving any type of discrimination against my identity has come from the professional world. Mm -hmm. Because even like high school, similar to Shirley, my high school was predominantly black and Hispanic. So I always lived in that bubble. When I went off to college, I found that community, <laughs> and those were like my friends, my people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I stuck to that community. I didn't like veer away from it. When I got into the education profession, I faced racism not directly, but more so through like practices and microaggressions, and <laughs> microaggressions <coughs> that I experienced was like being passed over for promotions or opportunities because. Mm -hmm. I am of who you Hispanic, were. Mm -hmm. and sometimes not even like <coughs> <Excuse me. coughs> knowingly, like they did it 
kind of like just looking out for their own and trying to keep things very white without knowing that they were looking over my qualifications mm -hmm. and my experience. Right. And in teaching students of color, I feel like my experiences are probably the most beautiful to those students right. and get the job done better. And mm -hmm. I can say the same for, you know, Matt, for Matt and Shirley as well. Absolutely. Like we are valuable in our field because of who we are. And what we can do. Like my first experience with racism uh, it was uh, December 1st, 1986. I was born at 1.06 a.m. And it happened at 1.07 when the white nurse thought I was dead and the black nurse said I was just sleeping. And I was just sleeping. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. That's awful. All my life. <laughs> All my life I had to fight. <laughs> uh, so, I mean... You know, thankfully, <laughs> listen, man, my, my parents uh, both went to uh, Ivy League bad. schools. That's where they met. Uh, the uh, Columbia University is why I exist. You know, shout out to Teachers College. Never went there, but thank you. Um, is that where they went? Yeah, they went to Teachers College. Yeah, that's where they met. Um, listen, they, yeah, they put me in a nice, you know, black bubble. You hmm. know, the only white people I saw was on TV. I saw on TV or, you know, if I'm going someplace with my parents, they're just looking at me and I'm like, why are these people looking at me like that? Hmm. But then, you're racist. <laughs> um, you know, I ended up going to the University of Kentucky for uh, school, and I'm glad I did. Um, I'm glad I did because I got to see uh, what it was like and how it felt uh, for a whole group of people or an institution to be against you, um, mm. other than the police. Um, and I experienced something called a white liberal racism. Mm. It's, mm. Like, it's not in your face, right? They say things like, you're well-spoken. Mm -hmm. For a black wow. man. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Oh, Matt, you're not not really black, right? You're not not like them. Like, oh, what do you mean by them? Then they cast their racism. I'm like, oh, what? I don't I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> yes, yeah, good 32 years. Well, um, <laughs> I've experienced racism, but it's been see, I'm half Dominican, half Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. So see, my Puerto Rican side, I'm not Puerto Rican enough for them. Mm. Mm. They're the light skinned one. Mm. The Puerto Re the Dominican side. I'm not Dominican for them. Mm. I'm too wow. light for them because my Dominican side are all dark, all dark. Uh, mm. I, I want to say my great grandmother was Haitian and Dominican, mm -hmm. and then my father's side they were all light skin. My mother was um, from what I I've been orphaned since I was seven, mm. but from my understanding, my mother was not liked by my grandmother, mm. who I'm named after. Thanks, mom, um, <laughs> <laughs> because she was dark skin because she was Dominican. And mm -hmm. so now it's the, it's the same form of racism, but it's within the own community. Right. And everybody would say, oh, my God, they have Dominican, have Puerto Rican. How? They hate each other. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how can they hate? They're, to me, they're all they're the same. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like there's different types of racism. You know, even in DR, like um, Dominicans, I went to DR, I want to say like 10, 12 years ago, 13 years ago. And I was looked up and down. Oh, you're American? You don't look it. Mm. And I'm like, why? Because I'm not walking around with name brand stuff, with jewelry, with, you know what I mean? But I'm like, but my birth certificate says that I'm American. You know what I mean? So it's like I've received racism from my own people. Right. Mm. Which is like, I think, even worse. Because now I'm trying to find myself. Where do I identify with? Right. So I just identify myself as American. Right. Because I'm not Puerto Rican enough for the Puerto Ricans, and I'm not Dominican enough for the Dominicans. Right. So. Yeah. Now, now, now you make me feel bad because, listen, I, I, I know within the black community, with, with light skinned folk, I. I uh, yeah. You have light skin privilege, I, right? I, 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 roast, I roast them at every level. He's a like, colorist. He roasts like, these like, people based on color. Like, He's a light, colorist. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like, like oh I, I, my I, I, God. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm and it's like my, my oldest oh daughter. My, God. my oldest daughter is actually, she's half Guata, uh, her father's half Guatemalan, mm -hmm. half Puerto Rican, then I'm half Dominican, half Puerto Rican. But the Guatemalan side, she'd over to get teased because she has like the long, you know, the, the straight hair. Like mm -hmm. she looks like, I don't want to say like Indian, but kind of, sort of. Like, mm -hmm. you know how the, she looks native. native. Yeah, yeah. She got the chinky eyes, but she's light skinned. Mm -hmm. But like in Massachusetts, because I still live in Massachusetts, that's where she lives. Um, a lot of people make fun of the Guatemalans because they're short, and mm -hmm. it's like, but they're the most hardworking people that I've seen. Mm -hmm. One of the most hardworking people that I've seen. Like they don't care rain, snow, sleet, shine. They're mm -hmm. out in the corner waiting to, for jobs and mm -hmm. stuff. And then you got the Puerto Ricans. 
that are lazy, don't want to do nothing but smoke drugs and stuff. And I can talk about this because I'm high Puerto Rican, all right? So I don't care what nobody says. I can talk about this. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it, it be like that. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like we, we're racist against even our own community, like Spanish community. Like I caught myself saying, I'm not Latino. I'm Hispanic because my parents are from the islands of Hispaniola. It's only because when I lived in DR, that's what I was taught. We are Hispanics. Um, Latin America, Mexicans, um, Guatemalan, Salvadorians, they're considered Latin Americans, Latin. mm -hmm. Latins, Latinos. Mm -hmm. So the, when people would be like, oh, you're Latina, I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm Hispanic. Yeah. And then I had to educate them, like, because my parents were born in the islands of Hispaniola, which consists of yeah. Cuba, Jamaica, uh, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. But it's like a whole, like, and at the end of the day, we're really all the same. No, I feel it. We are the same. I, I just got back from Africa because my dad is from Nigeria. And I actually got a rude awakening when I went there because they looked at me, they you heard the way that I talk, and they said, you're American. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, knew. they already knew. Mm -hmm. And I was treat. I felt a type of way because they're like, no, you're not African American, you're American. So my dad had to like speak on my behalf like, no, this is my daughter, she's good. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay. Otherwise, if I had just been there by myself, mm -hmm. I would have been ostracized. They wouldn't accept that. And a lot of African Americans what? don't realize that Africans do not F with us. No. They don't. They don't That's want sad. any parts of it. They're like, you are American. And when we went like through the villages, the little kids were like making fun of my cousin and I because we were, you know, lighter than everybody else. And they were calling us rich English women. Ha ha ha, rich English women. Nah, nah. No, I, I, wow. I have things like in my head. Oh, I, I have comments that are like firing. I I'm believe not, you. I, I'm we'll save it for Sunday. <laughs> I'm there. I can say it off air. Oh, we're going to save it for Sunday. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, that gets on my nerves. But go ahead. Got to be properly hydrated to do with that. But yeah. But I'm, I'm lingering more to the side of where it's the human race. I used yeah. to think that was so corny. But. It's I, one race. Yeah, I feel like everybody's mixed nowadays. Nobody is really race one beige. race anymore. Yeah. yeah. Like there's no more. Like my youngest daughter, her grandmother was half, uh, her grandmother was um, Scottish Canadian, but the grandfather was Cherokee Indian and Native American. Mm. The fa Her grandfather, Puerto Rican and Cuban. Mm -hmm. And then I'm Dominican and Puerto Rican. So this girl is like a mix, but she's light skinned, blonde hair, light eyes. You know, and people would be like, that's that's your daughter? Are you yeah. sure? I'm like, yeah, I get birthed her. I mean, I think that's my kid. You know what I mean? Like, do I need the DNA test? <laughs> and that's messed up. They <laughs> you are not the mother. <laughs> yeah, it's like so messed up. But it's like nowadays, every we're like a pot. And everybody yeah. is, mm. is, is something. And if to be in 2019 and, and for somebody to still be racist, it's, it's just crazy to me. But you know how you cure racism? Travel. So we yeah. can see different countries, go see different yeah. people, like experience them, mm -hmm. know that well, I want to thank you guys so much for coming to the House of Karma. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations on your new show. Thank I you. look forward to watching it every Sunday here on the LDM Network from 6 to 7 p.m. Comment section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you guys tune in. Follow them on Facebook. Follow them on Instagram. Comment radio. Comment radio on Instagram. <laughs> and this is not the last time you guys are going to see them. They have a lot of wonderful topics. Um, so just show support. You know, and like I said, you guys, thank you so much. I got to have you guys come back. Absolutely. Stay longer so we can talk. Of course. <laughs> you guys heard it here first on the LDM Network. House of Karma. We'll be back after this commercial break.
I got shorty on the knees like Kaepernick. No protesting. Told me she practiced abstinence. Well, she learned a lesson. Gotta know who you playing with. You around? Who's on that player? This shit don't play with fire. That's dangerous. My suggestion: go to church, start confessing. 'Cause I don't really wanna rap with you. I don't care about your dad issues, baby girl. I got mad issues. I ain't trying to be in. Looking at you like I told you so. I know I gotta look in my soul. I want a lady, but I fuck with hoes. As a young, that's how it goes. And I know it's bad. Look, I'm trying to refrain, girl. I'm trying to change. I'm saying, yo, I really want something real. Don't know how that feels, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't trying for you. Whoever you is, I'm waiting on the right one to step up on the plate, hit the home run, take me to my fate. Let me know you on sun, 'cause I don't know how to take it slow. I take it right now if you say so. It's okay though, girl, switch it up. We can lay low. She asking me what's on the side. Nothing is something is on the line. Stay with me, it's gonna take some time. My money come first. Play with my money, get hit with the skirt. I hope you out here thinking the same. Broke, nah, that ain't my thing. I ain't trying to play none of them games. Oh fuck, I look like one of these lames. I've been inside like all year's winter. I can't trust hoes. I seen them on Tinder and. Deals and deals, thirsty for niggas. That's why I'm acting the way that I do. You're special if something is different for you. You're special if you're taking time for my crew. Can't lie, this is something new. Not too many girls I call my boo. And yo, and I know it's bad. Look, I'm trying to refrain, girl. I'm trying to change. I'm saying, yo, I really want something real. Don't know how that feels. Hey everybody! Welcome back to House of Karma. I'm here with my good friend, guest、um, Ativa Morales, who's also a comedian slash drummer. Do I say drum? Do you, you is drummer. that considered drum? It's a drum sometimes. It's a drum that. Oh yeah, I can't say all that. <laughs> what what language is that? That is, I don't even know. That sounds like some type of like. Because the djembe is from all these other weird regions, so that like could be region. any, that could be any number of languages. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely.、Um, so welcome back. Thank you.、Um, you're gonna stay for the podcast that's coming right after this at 9 p.m. And I just wanted it to bring you back because you are extremely funny. On your Facebook, you're always talking about what. <laughs> you're you're always talking about your roommate, your landlady, your Jamaican yeah, landlady. Yeah, right. It's my sexy Jamaican. Your sexy Jamaican landlady. And my fat roommate. Your fat roommate. And then you got a new one, a stinky one. He's not new. He's been there for a while, but he just hasn't been smelling until like recently. He just became stinky. Yes, he just became. So、stinky. we, so we, I nicknamed him Ren and Stinky. Ren and Stinky. <laughs> Ren and Stinky because you know. <laughs> so what is your beef with with the fat roommate like? See, See the fat roommate. He used to like, like he was cool when he first came in. We actually used to smoke together, but then he started like getting too friendly. So he started borrowing my stuff. Like it started when he went into like, you know how every like black and Spanish household we have the packet drawer. We you have like soy sauce, duck sauce, right, right, right. put in that drawer by the sink. <laughs> so we had the packet drawer. He went in the packet drawer, took some of my cheese. I had like packs of Parmesan cheese from Little Caesars. Oh, okay, okay. I'm like cheese. Yes, little. So he started stealing your cheese. He took the cheese first, <laughs> and I was like, "All right, I'll let it slide." I was like, "Yeah,、right, you can't be doing that." Could you get it for free anyways?、Yeah. Then he started taking ketchup. <laughs> then he just started really going in, like going in the fridge and taking other things. He took two of my eggs. <laughs> you counted it. <laughs> I count all my shit. <laughs> I got little packs of sugar, just like the ones we have in here. Those little sweet mates. He started stealing it. He started taking those too. You don't touch the Dollar Tree. Oh you know, man! And so, what's going on with your Jamaican roommate, lady? The, oh,、uh, Jamaican, Jamaican lady. lady. Oh, does she、hot. know? Does she know that you got the hearts for her, or is she oblivious? I think she assumes because. Yeah. <laughs> I, I make those noises every time I pay her the rent. <laughs> did you pay her, her rent today? Oh no, I paid. Uh, I paid. <laughs> When did I pay her? I think I paid Today's her Monday. Today's the first. You know that. Monday. Okay, okay. You、yes. paid in advance. Yeah, of course I paid in advance. And she married or? I just found out recently she had a boyfriend, and I wasn't with that. Oh man. Because we were having a conversation about all the stuff that's going on in the house with like the smelly roommate and like the fat roommate not washing dishes. 
So then, like, in the middle of the conversation, someone, she says, oh, I was talking to my boyfriend, and I immediately just stopped listening. <laughs> Once they say boyfriend, I stop listening to everything else they say after. Then that hit you right in the heart. <laughs> <laughs> it hit me somewhere in a organ, but a little low in the heart, but it still hurt. Oh, man. She don't got no kids? Like She has one kid that lives there. Is it a guy? A boy? Yeah, it's a boy. Oh, uh, see? Well, if it was a girl, maybe. What? What was that? What was I'm that? just saying, you can't get the roommate, you might get the mom. <laughs> I mean, you can't get the mom, you might get the daughter. No. No? How old is the kid? The kid's like nine. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> nah, that's better. Whoa. Whoa. Nah. This sexy Jamaican landlady is about my age. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, she's a landlady? That's what's up. Yeah, because I think her mom died and left her the house, so now she has it. Okay, okay. She's a nurse, too, or some type of home. Oh, wow. All I know is she'd be looking sexy in those nurse pants. <laughs> Can't. All right, so what's the deal with the stinky roommate? He wasn't stinky before. He wasn't stinky before. Maybe he was stinky and I didn't notice. But, like, from what I hear, what the landlady tells me is that, like, he keeps old food and stuff in the room, in his room, and the smell seeps out. Oh, yuck. See, before he used to keep, like, a little towel on his door. And I thought that was because he was smoking weed. You know the old trick. Yeah, you smoke you, weed. You, and you put don't the towel on the knee. Which don't really you work. You wet it a little. You're supposed to wet it, oh, though. You're supposed to, I didn't you don't know, know that. that? In the hotel room, you wet the towel. Right, you put it on the. Not that I would know anything yeah. about. <laughs> so you heard. So I heard. You wet the towel, you put it underneath, and then. Oh. Okay. Yeah, the smell doesn't go on. Now you got a wet floor. Well, it doesn't matter because you you're only gonna be there for like a day. Oh yeah. A night. But you don't that in your go, home. You just open up the window. See, that's what I do spray. is I light incense as I. Sp- well, see, I don't smoke the whole thing. I have this little thing. You know those little things that looks like a cigarette. It's metal. Put the little. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The foot, the hitter. It. Yeah, one hitter. Yeah. Just get one mean? big pull. Actually, it's good. It, you get you absorb a lot of it that way. <laughs> oh my no gosh! Extra, no extra paper, nothing. You're inhaling. You're just inhaling just that. Really? So you just stuff the thing with yep. with the good you stuff. You get the larger one. You can stuff more. So that's the one I have. Oh, I always thought that was like for roaches and stuff. But, <laughs> roaches. <laughs> but um, we're gonna continue this topic um, with our podcast Petty Talk, which is coming right after this. Um, make sure y'all log on to the LDM radio so y'all can hear more. I want to thank our special guest today, Comment Session, for coming and talking to us. It's a wonderful thing when you have people of color who are trying to make a difference, who are trying to um, educate our children to, you know, who we are because we've been lied to a lot. Mm-hmm. And I can agree to that. We've been taught things that nowadays we don't even use. Like, I'm still trying to figure out. When the heck have I ever used algebra? Like, why is algebra so important? I've never gone what to a supermarket. Algebra? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, don't, I just know how to <laughs> multiply, add, subtract, divide. We never use that, know. but decimals. That's for money. You need the decimals. I mean, need the decimals. yeah, but fractions and all that. Well, fractions aren't decimals. That's what I learned. They say you can convert them into. Yeah, you convert them. I'm horrible with math, so I wouldn't know. I felt math like. A lot, like all my classes, I was still in like tenth grade math by the time I was. A I haven't even like finished college because of that math. Because I can't math, get through that hump. But I that. actually still have dreams about being at and back in school simply because doing I doing math. Yes. Oh my god, I hate it. To this day, still <laughs> dreams. I've been out of school for probably like twenty years or so, Ooh. and I'm still having dreams about that. that but I have to go back. Nightmare. Because I felt math. That's me, but I'm like, oh, I'll do it next year. But anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching House of Karma. Stay tuned. Heady talk coming next. <laughs> Sometimes we gotta let each other know how to treat a man and how to keep a man.